All right, on to our final speaker of the morning before our discussion. We have with us um, from France, uh, Pierre Benoit Joly. He is an economist and sociologist, and he's director of research at the National Institute of Agro Agronomic Research in France. He holds a degree in agronomy, a PhD in economics, and the Habilitation à diriger les recherches as well. He is director of uh, the French Institute for Studies of Research and Innovation in Society and of the Laboratory of Excellence, CITES. And since 1996, his research activities are focused on the governance of collective risks, socio-technical controversies, the use of scientific advice in public decision-making, and the forms of public participation in scientific activities. Again, exactly what um, we need uh, advice on on this committee. So Pierre Benoit, I'm going to turn things over to you. But I don't hear you. Can you, I don't see you, there we go. Okay, I still don't hear you. Are you unmuted? Okay. There, now I can hear you. All right, yes. So and I have to, uh, to unshare and so I, okay. Good. So sorry for these. Can you can can you see the presentation? Yeah. Yes. Is it okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh, many thanks, Edison, for the invitation and for um, the organization of this session. Uh, we have a, so, somehow a plurality of voices, but uh, there's a perfect uh, sequence of uh, arguments. So uh, I will follow up on the, the argument of Ben and, and beyond. Uh, Yes, no dichotomies uh, in um, the governance of, uh, of uh, technologies, but uh, perhaps with a different take uh, somehow. So um, I, I will, um, uh, well, as Sheila said, um, uh, well, when we look uh, at uh, science and technology studies as a field, nuclear power has um, central uh, importance. And uh, my argument is that uh, it is one of uh, the technologies that um, is uh, really interesting for uh, putting uh, technical democracy on track. So I, I won't deal um, at length with uh, what is democracy, what is uh, um, technical democracy. I will um, uh, draw on a major contribution of uh, Michel Callon and, and colleagues uh, uh, in their book, uh, Acting in uh, an Uncertain World, that uh, well, it's a landmark book uh, um, well, internationally. Um, note that uh, in the French uh, landscape, it, it uh, triggered a lot of uh, discussions, uh, not only in the academia, but also uh, in the government bodies, I mean, more generally uh, in the management of, uh, of technology areas. So, um, uh, Calon, um, to put it uh, simple, suggests that uh, there are different types of, uh, uh, of uh, technical democracy. So the technocratic one, and Sheila um, uh, presented it that uh, uh, at length. And Calon opposed this uh, uh, well, technocratic model to other models, the model of uh, public debate on alternative technology called options, and a model of co-design of socio-technical uh, systems. So wh wh when we look at, at this actually, and uh, the relation between technology and, uh, and democracy, uh, obviously there are some common bases uh, and they are much uh, widespread uh, uh, internationally. So uh, they are under, under the title of uh, principles of good governance and, and regulation in Europe. We, we have a white paper on these, and I guess that it is um, uh, commonly uh, 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 accepted internationally. Um, and more precisely, uh, some uh, principles for uh, scientific uh, expertise with principle of uh, quality or competence, independence, uh, transparency, plurality of expertise. Um, 
Um, well, no need to mention that uh, if you look at the 40 years uh, 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 that uh, just have passed, actually, in some countries like uh, France uh, in particular, we had a tremendous transformation of uh, the uh, landscape shifting from um, kind of a monopoly of expertise around the uh, Commissariat and Energy Atomic towards um, a, a landscape with uh, uh, a plurality of uh, institutions, which is obviously important uh, uh, for the safety of the technologies and in particular for uh, nuclear energy, but also uh, for uh, the construction of uh, trust uh, between the different uh, public stakeholders and, um, uh, and, the, and, and the technology promoters. But also there is a, an issue with uh, the technology uh, assessment. And uh, in France, uh, the parliamentary uh, um, assessment plays uh, an important role. So there are some, these basic may be discussed, but uh, well, we have to keep th them in mind when we um, consider the interaction between technology and, and democracy. But I want to, um, uh, to to turn to another issue and consider the the, the model two and model three of uh, Michel Callon, where the interaction between uh, the technology promoters and the different publics is uh, uh, more uh, intensive. And, when we look at these models, uh, the key questions are, what is to be debated uh, actually? And what are the links between what is debated and the decision-making process? Does it matter or not? And how is it used in the decision-making process? And we, if we look at uh, nuclear power actually, these questions may boil down to the divisibility issue. So uh, I refer to this issue following uh, Albert Ishman, uh, um, a classical uh, uh, divide of um, uh, between divisible conflicts, uh, which are centered on questions of more or less and distributive justice and non-divisible conflicts that instead develop around either or yes, no issues such as religious or ethnic thoughts or conflicts over issues like uh, abortion or others. So when we look at this, obviously this, has, uh, this, this conceptual dichotomy has a uh, key uh, influence because when we have, when we face uh, with um, divisible conflicts, actually there's a lot of place for negotiation and um, we can expect that uh, the interaction between the technology promoters and the possible users and the general public, whichever it is, um, uh, these interactions as a whole um, um, a high potential value added. So not, <laughs> of course, just uh, bringing, uh, fostering acceptancy, but uh, um, uh, improving the socio-technical uh, solutions. Whereas if we look at non-divisible issues, actually there's no room for, um, for uh, compromise, for negotiation, and for this type of, uh, of, uh, of, of co-production. So uh, the, the, well, when, when we look at um, um, nuclear energy, there are a lot of reasons to consider that uh, nuclear energy production is a non-divisible issue. And if I take the example of the design and implementation of the French program uh, in the 60s and, and 70s, actually, which was really, it is a, a paramount example of technocratic uh, governance of uh, solutionism, solutionism uh, so technology fix, and uh, where actually the uh, technocrat, the promoters have the notion of what is good for the society and the society just as uh, to, to, to follow. Um, my argument here is that uh, the DVD issue is partly due to the technology, but also partly due to the way it is developed. Um, and actually, uh, 
as uh, you may understand, uh, technology fix uh, does not leave any place for debate and, and, and negotiation. So I will end up uh, with, uh, with this question, actually, is it possible to conceive the nuclear energy production as a divisible issue? So I think that uh, the, the, the reflection of uh, uh, Benham um, have um, dealt with this issue, but uh, there are other ways to also deal with this issue. So obviously, um, um, uh, uh, technologists may look at the materiality, uh, the materiality issue. So, uh, for instance, can, can we consider that uh, if we reduce the size of uh, the reactors, if we change the type of reactors, uh, does it make it? Uh, the, the, does it make this uh, technology more? Uh, divisible. Um, uh, I think that we also have to look at the divisibility of the technology in another way, uh, to look at the process. And I guess that one of the 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 the, the, the ways we have to explore is uh, how far it is possible uh, to keep the future open. Uh, and so there's obviously the, the, the idea that uh, uh, we do not have to put uh, all the eggs in the same baskets. Uh, and so we have to explore the different possibilities of uh, decarbonation. And I'm, I echo here uh, well, one of the arguments of, uh, of Andy. So uh, uh, let's look at the different possibilities of, the, of uh, uh, decarbonized energy and the different possibilities. And let's keep uh, the options uh, open. Also, avoid the irreversible de decisions. So keep the diversity of the energy mix uh, compatible with uh, decarbonation. I guess that uh, these are important uh, avenues for some of the European countries uh, in different ways. And I guess that the future of uh, the nuclear energy production actually has to take that uh, seriously into account. So. Um, okay, I'm done. So uh, thanks for your attention, and I'm very um, glad to, to for the and waiting for the for the coming discussion. Wonderful, thank you.